Hi everyone, welcome back with a set of Tiffin recipes. Now this was highly requested since schools have reopened in many countries and even here too, but within few weeks we'll be having our summer vacation. Anyway, in today's video showing out four easy Tiffin recipes. Here my kids come back before lunch. So the Tiffin recipes I have included are a kind of breakfast recipes too. There are two wraps and two other. Hope you would like it. Keep watching. I'll begin with the wraps. Firstly, a very simple sweet wrap. For this, I have taken two blocks of cream cheese and two triangles of salted cheese. You can even use any one type. It's up to you. Add it into a bowl and just mix well until it becomes creamy. Add a pinch or quarter teaspoon of cinnamon powder and mix. Now this video was taken some time back and in my time saving recipe video I had shown how I store leftover pita breads. So take out two pita breads from the freezer. Now here I am making two wraps, so I have taken two bananas. You will need one banana for one wrap. Then some butter. Heat a pan and melt some butter. Place the pita bread and spread some more butter on top. Let it get a bit warm on both sides. Place it on an aluminium foil or any wrapping sheet. Spread little cheese mixture all over. Here I am cutting the banana in half. You can even slice them in round or even keep it as such without cutting. It's up to you. And then roll. And your wrap is ready. Now instead of banana, you can even add dates. I had done adding chocolate brownies once for my kids and they loved it. The cream cheese and brownies give a good combination. Next is an egg wrap which is again very simple. Here instead of chopping the cabbage I use the whole leaf that's a large leaf and sliced off the hard middle part making it a little flat. You'll need one leaf per wrap. Then eggs, then sliced onions. Now into a bowl add eggs. Here I am using 2 eggs for 2 wraps. You can divide the ingredients as per needed. Into another bowl adding half teaspoon garlic powder, half teaspoon onion powder, half to 3 fourth teaspoon dried basil leaves. Quarter teaspoon dried oregano. It has a strong flavor, so don't add more. Paprika, around 3 4 teaspoon. Add some water and mix together. Then beat the eggs, adding some salt. Add the paste and mix well. Into a heated pan add some butter. I'm adding half at a time to make one wrap. Keep the flame low.
add sliced onions you may even add tomatoes or olives or any other of your choice place one cabbage leaf add some shredded mozzarella cheese for a cheesy taste here i'm placing one large chapati you can use tortilla pita bread or any other of your choice flip it over with a plate place it back for a minute then place it on a foil or any wrapping paper roll and your wrap is ready next is a spicy puttu in my previous video i had shown a sweet version and i don't remember who but someone had commented that the spicy one is also tasty so tried and it was really tasty so here i'm using 1 cup puttu flour this is rice flour but it's a little different from the rice flour that we use for making rice rotis this will have some grains in it it won't be completely fine or powdered You can even make it homemade. Shall show it in some other video later. Add some salt and mix. Add warm water and crumble it with your hands and keep adding warm water little at a time and crumble till you get the texture almost like a wet sand. Don't add too much water at a time. The consistency may go wrong. So be patient and add little by little. So this is how it should be. Now this is optional but a great tip to make really soft puttu. Add into a blender and just pulse it a few times. You shouldn't be grinding it. Pulse it 3 or 4 times and you'll get a soft texture. My mother-in-law adds a cup of cooked rice, any rice that you have for lunch. Add it to a blender and make a paste, then add to the flour in the beginning and then make the puttu flour adding water. This even adds good taste and texture. Now this is the puttu maker. You steam the flour in this. You will get this along with the set. And this is the bowl you will boil water in. There are puttu makers that you can keep on your pressure cooker, but I prefer this. So starting with layering, add grated coconut first, around one tablespoon. Then the flour, two or three tablespoons. It depends on how much you need. I prefer three spoons. Then again, add a tablespoon of grated coconut. and then 3 tablespoons of flour repeat and on the top add grated coconut and then cover then when the water boils keep it on top reduce the flame to medium and you'll see the steam coming through the holes once the steam starts coming i keep it as such for 3 to 4 minutes and then take it out push it slowly from the back side using a thick stick or a spatula make the rest the same way now to make the masala heat some ghee in a kadai this is a mixture of four garlic cloves two green chilies and a small piece of ginger adding a few curry leaves to saute well for few minutes then add one large onion chopped saute until it's soft add one medium size tomato chopped and mix some salt we had already added in the puttu too so don't add more then goes quarter teaspoon turmeric powder 1 teaspoon coriander powder half teaspoon garam masala powder mix well until everything is well combined adding a handful of chopped coriander leaves and mix then crumble the puttu into it and toss well
Toss for 3 to 4 minutes and it's ready. Next is stuffed idli and with the same showing how to make idli chaat. To make idlis I have shown earlier too. You may skip if you know. Just showing it for beginners. This is idli rice that you get in the market. The same can be used to make dosas as well. My cup measurement is around 390 grams. Using 1 cup rice. In the same measuring cup, take half cup urad dal and add to a separate bowl. Wash well. I soak the rice and dal in filtered water and use the same water for grinding. Soak for at least 6 hours. Once well soaked, grind the urad dal first. I add the water and dal together in the blender. Remove the excess water and start grinding. If you feel the mixture is too thick and isn't grinding well, add the separated water little by little. You need to get a thick consistency. That's the smooth batter of urad dal. Add it into a bowl. You don't have to wash the blender. Now same way add the soaked rice. Remove the excess water. And in the same measuring cup, add 3 fourth cup of cooked rice. Here I have used red rice or the matta rice that we eat for lunch. Add water again little at a time. Now tip for idli batter. You don't have to make it to a very smooth batter. There should be small tiny grains of the rice. I hope you can see. Smooth batters are made for dosa usually. To get good idlis, let there be tiny grains. Add it to the urad dal mixture. And to get the best fermentation, mix with your hands. Cover and it depends on the climate. During summers, you may need 8 to 10 hours and in winters, even more. In the morning, you can see it has well fermented. Add some salt and mix. Fermented food is always good for your gut bacteria. Now for the chutney, into 1.5 cup of grated coconut, add a small piece of ginger, 3 green chilies, more or less, it's up to you, some coriander leaves, few mint leaves, salt and very little water and make a paste. To add some taste, a drop of coconut oil or ghee onto the idli tray. Pour 1 spoon of the batter. Then on top, 1 spoon of the chutney. Then again, 1 spoon batter to cover the chutney. Meanwhile, the water needs to be kept for steaming. Keep it inside and steam for 15 minutes on medium-low flame. Then take it out. Remove when it cools down. If you try taking it out while still hot, it may break or will stick to the bottom. Now that's the stuffed idli. It's easy to send in the kids stiffen so that you don't have to bother sending another bottle of chutney. Now for the chart, just cut the idlis in pieces. Into heated coconut oil or ghee, add a teaspoon of mustard seeds, some curry leaves and a tablespoon of dried red chilli flakes. Mix for a few seconds and add the idlis. This can be done even with plain idlis. Add a handful of chopped coriander leaves and a teaspoon of chaat masala. Toss it well in low flame for 5 to 10 minutes until you get a little crunch on the idlis. Meanwhile, for the curd, add 2 big spoons in a bowl. Mix for 
then half teaspoon chaat masala and one teaspoon roasted cumin powder and mix well add very little water if curd is thick add the idlis in a bowl and add the curd on top sprinkle some cumin powder kashmiri red chili powder and chopped coriander leaves you can add some sweet and spicy chutneys too but this is even tasty as such this is an alternative to dahi vada so that's for today's tiffin recipes do try it out i am sure you and your family would love it don't forget to share your feedback too pass it on to your friends and family see you soon with another video until then take care bye bye